dear friends as i speak on the family as an experience of the little church i'd like to dedicate this presentation to the numerous families in mumbai and in other parts of the country that are facing serious issues connected with health with finances with relationships during the days of the lockdown if there is one experience that predominates in our lives it is the fact of having been thrown together in a certain sense to live as a family with its strengths and weaknesses its ups and downs its hopes and anxieties there is no escape we find ourselves face to face with each other in our homes what do we make of this living in close proximity with each other in spite of being asked to maintain social distancing can we distance ourselves from the very members of our own families and so our topic is very very relevant for our times the little church lived in family life as christians we don't just live in family as a unit of society but we live church in our togetherness in the constitution of the second vatican council lumen gentium we read perpetuating the people of god through the centuries the family is so to speak the domestic church in his catechesis on the family saint pope john paul the second defined the family as the way of the church this is what we read in amoris laetitia in our very homes we are experiencing church how are we to capture this experience during the lockdown and make it an authentic living and life giving experience of the church after this lockdown is over we will become a new way probably of being church experience in family life I'd like to do my presentation in two points. The first is how do we experience family life today with all its hopes and joys. The second is what are the assurances that we receive from our faith and from the scriptures about how we can best live this family life experience a look at what families are experiencing today my first point i spoke to two of our counselors from the snehalaya who are doing counseling over the phone during these days and i asked them what was their predominant experience during these encounters with people and if i may summarize not referring to who has said it or in any way to the identity of people but to the experience of their counseling they felt the following the first predominant feeling that came across from those to whom they spoke was the feeling of fear fear about the uncertainty when will the virus stop haunting us when can we determine the symptoms of the virus especially since it is mutating what about our work our jobs our earning the fear about family life and the impact of this fear 
on living together. The second experience is that of proximity. Many of the people in Mumbai especially are living in small houses and there is no escape from this proximity. 24-7 they are thrown in with each other. Good family life is enjoyed but difficult family life can be very trying. Another experience of the counsellors was that of faith. There is a growth in faith. Faith not as a crutch but faith as supporting them in all these difficulties. I would like to touch on these difficulties in the following points. Firstly, relationships. Especially for the elderly and those who are living alone, there is no escape from this loneliness. Even among the young, they could always go out with friends to the shopping mall, to the cinemas, a walk, but no, this experience of relationships seems to be from the distance. The elderly also are experiencing this loneliness and they are learning to cope with each other. Some are saddened because of a loss of a dear one and maybe their inability to reach out and visit these homes of the bereaved. Children especially are missing their peer groups with online studies. Yes, that's a good possibility, a good alternative, but physical proximity is also an enjoyable experience. And many children and youth are deprived of this today. The second is the experience of health and matters connected with health. Even a minor ailment like a cough or a cold or an ordinary flu, which is very common during the monsoons, this minor ailment can become a major monster. How are families coping with health issues? And what about the others facing major health issues like diabetes, cancer, cardiac problems? They are afraid because they do not want to approach a hospital they could they could be contaminated further. This experience of exercise, which many used to have walks, going to a park, going to a ground, and making sure that they exercise every day, this is also becoming a difficulty during our times. And as an underlining experience, when we look at the economic situation in families, that seems to touch every aspect of family life and of relationships. Families that have experienced death because of a loan, the loss of a job, lack of savings, groceries becoming difficult to get, this is an economic issue that is being faced. Another thing that is being changed today is the whole experience of faith. Many people are asking questions. Where is God in all this? How can God permit these experiences? And they are asking these questions in the homes and very often even parents are at the loss to give a proper answer. Is 
faith going to be a crutch or are they going to look at faith as a mature faith that helps them to grow to come closer to the church in a very conscious choice and not because of necessity and are they going to experience church differently this could be a faith experience looking at all these elements they can become the signs of our times as the second vatican council invited the church to look at the signs of the time and to see what is god's word to us today as we look at the various aspects of the faith based on scripture text and the tradition of the church i would like to give a few guidelines of faith that can help family life in these trying times the first fact about our faith is that jesus came and became incarnate in a family his incarnation was not an abstract theological experience it was jesus who truly became fully god and fully man within a family the nicene creed says for men and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the holy spirit he became incarnate of the virgin mary and was made man by his incarnation he also lifts up human life and this is very heartening for us today he lifts up family life and so if in our homes and in our families we are experiencing a deterioration of relationships problems of one type or the other yes the very incarnation of the lord can lift us up amoris letitia says in the incarnation he assumes human love purifies it and brings it to fulfillment he assumes it in order to purify it and to bring it to fulfillment and so the incarnation can have a positive effect saint thomas aquinas said in the son of god became man with the clear purpose of wanting to make us sharers in his divinity he became human so that all human beings can share in the divinity of god the catechism of the catholic church says the son of god worked with human hands and with a human heart he loved born of the virgin mary he has truly been made one with us like unto us in all things but sin every family can then look at the experience of the incarnation of jesus and allow his incarnation to lift us up to lift us up from a feeling of being down to lift us up when we are lonely to lift us up when we are anxious to lift us up when we are locked in our rooms the second assurance that we get from our faith is seen in the letter to the romans our connection with jesus who said saint paul echoing the words of the lord and the assurance of the lord who shall separate us from the love of christ shall trouble or hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness or dangers or the sword all this cannot separate us from the lord jesus and from his love and so in these difficult times nothing can ever 
separate us from the Lord. He will never abandon us. What are we experiencing? Are we experiencing this as a source of confidence? He is not going to abandon us. The third assurance is that Jesus breaks through closed doors. The risen Lord entered into a room that was closed. They were afraid of people and they locked themselves in. Today also many people are locked in those and even if we are locked in those, Jesus can break through closed doors to enter into our family life and to be with us so that we don't experience claustrophobic feelings but knowing that Jesus is our visitor who has come to stay with us during these days and finally he also gives us the assurance that I will be with you till the end of time so it is not a quick visit and he dismisses himself but Jesus has assured us in Matthew 28 16 to 20 I will be with you till the end of time till the end of the ages and surely if he is with us what do we need to fear dear friends I would like to conclude with this beautiful prayer that we find in Amoris Laetitia given to us by Pope Francis Jesus Mary and Joseph in you we contemplate the splendor of true love to you we turn with trust holy family of Nazareth grant that our families too may be places of communion and prayer authentic schools of the gospel and small domestic churches holy family of Nazareth may families never again experience violence rejection and division may all who have been hurt or scandalized find ready comfort and healing holy family of Nazareth make us once more mindful of the sacredness and the inviolability of the family and its beauty in God's plan Jesus Mary and Joseph graciously hear our prayer Amen I would like that we remember also the numerous families that inspire us I am a priest but very often we priests say look at the homes look at the families they are an inspiration in these difficult times and so dear people of God your families are truly an inspiration for us thank you God bless Very warm welcome to today's prayer service. 
We thank Father Cleophus for the wonderful teaching on the family as a domestic church. Today's prayer is what I call the five-step method of praying. I've adapted it from Neil Lozano's five-key prayer model known as Unbound. Our families are meant to be living the victorious Christian life. But sometimes family life can be disrupted when the family as a whole or individuals within the family are going through some struggles. For example, especially during this lockdown period, many are experiencing fear or anxiety or depression. This method of prayer is very useful when dealing with negative thoughts and emotions like anger, fear, anxiety, depression, sadness, or even suicidal thoughts, or even habitual sins like uh, lying, gossiping, masturbation, or vices and addictions like the seven capital sins, or abuse of alcohol and drugs, or addiction to porn. I personally use it in my morning prayer to pray against the seven capital sins. The prayer itself is very simple and easy to remember. There are five simple steps. The first is to renounce. The second is to break. The third is to cast. The fourth is to fill. And the fifth is to bless. So for example, let us suppose you are struggling with fear. So you would pray in this manner. The first step would be, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce fear. The second step is, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by fear. The third step is, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out fear. The fourth step is, Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. And the fifth step is, Father God, you bless me. So here in the first step, the way to understand renounce is as if you are telling the whole world you want nothing to do with fear. In the second step, we are breaking all bonds caused by fear. Whenever we are gripped with fear or any other negative emotion, it is as if we are being held in bondage and we are not free to be ourselves. And so here, in the name of Jesus, we are breaking those bonds. In the third step, once those bonds have been broken in the name of Lord Jesus, we cast out that negative emotion. And in the fourth step, once that negative emotion has been cast out, it is as if there is an emptiness in you, a vacuum in you, that needs to be filled with God's Spirit. And so we say, Lord Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In the fifth step, to seal it, we say, Father God, bless me. Sometimes when praying this prayer, you may experience some form of physical discomfort like pain so you could experience pain in various parts of your body like maybe pain in your stomach or pain in your chest or pain in your neck or you may experience a headache or you might even experience a heaviness or a feeling of choking or breathlessness for whatever physical discomfort you experience repeat this type five steps for that discomfort for example, if you are experiencing a headache, you would pray it like, In the name of Lord Jesus, I renounce this headache. In the name of Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by this headache. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out this headache. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. So repeat the steps till the physical discomfort disappears. When you have finished praying for all what you are struggling with, in the end, repeat the steps for everything that does not belong to God's kingdom. So the way we will pray this prayer is that I will pray it and you repeat it after me. We will start with fear and then move on to other areas. So I invite you to take a comfortable posture of prayer. You may close your eyes. Let us Keep a moment of silence. Let us sign ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Lord God, I thank and praise you for all those who are watching this video. Ask you, Lord God, to be with them, to send forth your angels, your healing angels, to be with them. Mother Mary and all the angels and saints, continue to intercede for us. Kindly repeat this prayer after me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce fear. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by fear. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out fear. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We will now renounce sadness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce sadness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by sadness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out sadness. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We will now do it for anxiety. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce anxiety. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by anxiety. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out anxiety. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We'll do it for depression. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce depression. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by depression. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out depression. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We'll do it for guilt. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce guilt. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by guilt. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out guilt. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We do it for shame. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce shame. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by shame. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out shame. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We'll do it for loneliness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce loneliness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by loneliness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out loneliness. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We'll do it for rejection. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce rejection. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by rejection. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out rejection. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We'll do it for suicidal thoughts. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce suicidal thoughts. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by suicidal thoughts. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out suicidal thoughts. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We'll do it for addiction to porn. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce porn. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by porn. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out porn. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father God, you bless me. We do it for masturbation. 
in the name of the lord jesus i renounce masturbation in the name of the lord jesus i break all bonds caused by masturbation in the name of the lord jesus i cast out masturbation lord jesus you fill me with your holy spirit father god you bless me we'll do it for pride in the name of the lord jesus i renounce pride in the name of the lord jesus i break all bonds caused by pride in the name of the lord jesus i cast out pride lord jesus you fill me with your holy spirit father god you bless me we'll do it for avarice or greed in the name of the lord jesus i renounce greed in the name of the lord jesus i break all bonds caused by greed in the name of the lord jesus i cast out greed lord jesus you fill me with your holy spirit father god you bless me we'll do it for lust in the name of the lord jesus i renounce lust In the name of the Lord Jesus I break all bonds caused by lust In the name of the Lord Jesus I cast out lust Lord Jesus you fill me with your holy spirit Father God you bless me We do it for envy In the name of the Lord Jesus I renounce envy In the name of the Lord Jesus I break all bonds caused by envy. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I cast out envy. Lord Jesus, you fill me with your holy spirit. Father God, you bless me. We do it for gluttony. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I renounce gluttony. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I break all bonds caused by gluttony. In the name of the Lord Jesus I cast out gluttony Lord Jesus you fill me with your holy spirit Father God you bless me we do it for anger In the name of the Lord Jesus I renounce anger In the name of the Lord Jesus I break all bonds caused by anger In the name of the Lord Jesus I cast out anger Lord Jesus you fill me with your holy spirit father god you bless me we do it for slot or laziness in the name of the lord jesus i renounce laziness in the name of the lord jesus i break all bonds caused by laziness in the name of the lord jesus i cast out laziness lord jesus You fill me with your holy spirit father god you bless me we end with praying renouncing everything which does not belong to god's kingdom in the name of the lord jesus i renounce everything that does not belong to your kingdom in the name of the lord jesus i break all bonds caused by everything that does not belong to your kingdom In the name of the Lord Jesus I cast out everything that does not belong to your kingdom Lord Jesus you fill me with your holy spirit Father God you bless me Thank you Father thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit I'm sure many of you all will be experiencing a sense of peace of lightness of joy You can also pray this on behalf of someone else whom you know are going through some struggles Thank you for joining me in this time of prayer. God bless.